Tom, before we even get into it, is football coming home, mate? How's England feeling? Is football coming home? Oh, what a painful question that I could feel the rest of your program answering. Um, do you know what? I think England have probably been the most underwhelming team in the tournament of a group of pretty underwhelming teams. France have been really poor. They've not scored a goal in open play themselves as yet. Only own goals have gone in, in that scenario. Uh, Portugal keep trying to find ways to make Cristiano Ronaldo work. It doesn't work and they'll keep on trying. So there's a few teams that haven't performed well, but England... I mean, it just, it's been so inexplicable. They had four really lovely Dolly fixtures and they seem to have got progressively worse with the exact same issues from not having a left back, not playing a natural left winger. They're not having width on the left-hand side because there's no left back. The midfield three does not work and Southgate has changed the third player in that three every game in the hope that it will. There's no width on either side of Harry Kane, so everything looks really narrow. And at points during the last game, there was like five number 10s on the field, but literally nobody running in behind to make the number 10 position a worthwhile role. Um, That's just some of the issues that have been gripping England. The amazing thing is they still go into the game against Switzerland at the weekend as favourites, and they still go into the last eight teams competing as the favourites to win the competition. It's wild. Now, this this is the most bizarre thing, isn't it? A, A team which is just stuck in its own quicksand and yet at the same time we all look at it and think potential 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 they will kick into gear at some stage why do we continually believe this when gareth has never demonstrated anything other than what he's continued to do the whole time yeah i mean this has actually been almost a uh reversal of, of gareth southgate and what he's been able to do in tournaments and again they've got through so fine though can we put jude bellingham's incredible last minute overhead kick down to his coaching acumen i don't think they can you know it's better to be lucky than good and all that but but gareth southgate actively hurt england in the last game with his tactical decisions or lack thereof and look it's worth going back to the the last European Championship final against Italy, if Roberto Mancini was England manager, England would be European champions. Mancini managed the game, improved Italy as he went, got them to penalties from being a goal behind, and then they won that game. Gareth Southgate has not developed as a coach since that point. He has not developed as a coach since the World Cup run of 2018. He doesn't know how to make changes, doesn't know how to improve things in game, and that may well cost England in the end. But, They still have, for me, the best attack player for player in the competition. They still have a very good defence, a really good goalkeeper, a strong midfield player for player. If he gets the team right, swallows some pride, makes it clear he knows he got the left side wrong and the front three wrong and the midfield wrong in those opening games. If that's been omitted this week, if there was some soul-searching, deep conversation, tactical analysis, and he plays a balanced team, of his best players in those particular positions that need improving. Um, I do think England can win it. I really, really do. But I don't know. When they line up with Kieran Trippier, left back, it'll somehow be fit and play. And Phil Foden left wing in that front three, it doesn't work on Saturday. Um, I'll change my mind at that exact moment. And Tom Rooney from TalkSport with us. It was such a knife edge. There was only seconds to go. The whole country was prepared to go into apoplexy. And then all of a sudden, one overhead kick. We see pictures of the fans in the in the stands. Well, I don't know. Were they uh, snorting codrills off tin foil? Tom, you tell me how how it works in England football fandom. And then the the, the place went <laughs> nutty. I mean, it was just like honestly, uh, you know, like the fiftieth jubilee celebrations. You'd won the war again. All of those kind of <laughs> things. I mean, everything gets forgiven, doesn't it? One single strike. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think there's still a lot of analysis going on because it was a, a, a game that should have been uh, a walkover and it ended up being a, a massive, massive test for England when it probably shouldn't have been. So, look, there's still lots to talk about because England is still in the tournament. But the headline picture is they are still in the tournament. And I would happily be the worst team ever to win the European Championship. I was delighted, as you know, and, and many listeners will know, that West Ham won the Conference League final in Prague against Fiorentina when they were outplayed by Fiorentina for 90 minutes. Does that matter now when I watch it again on my uh, my Virgin Media box once a month? I like to watch the entire game in full. No, it doesn't bother me. It's absolutely fine to, pay, right. to be bad exactly. and win yes. as long as you win. And that's the, that's the thing. Well, OK, so, so just on that before we go through uh, uh, game by game, 
Uh, Portugal won it in 2016, drawing the first three matches. And as you said, got yeah. progressively better. We've seen Italy. We're old enough to remember Italy win World Cups doing exactly the same kind of thing, looking awful through a group stage and just scuffing their way through. Uh, in 2006, if I remember, actually, I think Australia had them down to 10 men and actually a goal up and a very dodgy penalty got the Italians out of jail in there. Okay. So it doesn't matter, though, does it, Tom? You know, the All Blacks won a World Cup final in 2011, 8-7 against the worst French side in the weakest World Cup ever in the history of rugby. It doesn't matter. Mm. The only thing that matters is you yep. have your name on the trophy. And this is why there is still hope in England, because they may well get outplayed by Switzerland this weekend, and I think they will. The Swiss are a better team, and Granit Xhaka has low-key been the best player in the tournament, and maybe European football across the last 12 months. But England have Jude Bellingham, Harry Kane, Phil Foden, Bukayo Saka, and if the chance comes, the moment comes, the magic moment in a dirge of a diabolical, awful game, and it breaks to one of those guys, they will more than likely take that chance, as we saw with Bellingham at the weekend uh, and that is why there is faith in England and that is why there is still people thinking they can get over the line here because there's so much room for improvement but my my, my friend and colleague Rodney Marsh the legendary footballer oh, is, always says to me keep your best players on the field at all times keep your goal scorers on the field at all times and if you do that you will win more games than you don't and if you have Jude Bellingham and they don't if you have Phil Foden and they don't if you have Harry Kane and they don't, you have more of a chance of winning the game than they do. And, you know, that's that that's, that supports your point completely. England can be absolutely useless all the way through this. But that's why Jude Bellingham remained on the field in the 94th minute to score that goal. Because almost nobody else in the tournament, Mbappe apart, could do that. And, and that's why England are still in it. Rodney Marsh, God, I tell you what, I still remember that game against Hereford for Fulham. Why that game? Remember that game, the 4-1? <laughs> there was him and George Best, and it was just a festival. Or, eh? if you get the chance to ask him about that game, Martin, which I have, and, and that era, when him and Bestie were having the time yes, of their lives yes. playing second division football for Fulham when they both should have retired, and that was the attempt to keep Bestie on the straight and narrow, and then they went to America. Didn't quite work out. No, way. didn't quite work out.